Let's do part one. Let's talk about manual data entry into the register. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to QuickBooks Online here, and then I'm going to open a, a credit card statement, sort of a, a typical thing that a client will give us. And they'll give us a credit card statement that contains a whole bunch of transactions. And they'll say, hey, can you enter this stuff into QuickBooks? Okay. So we're going to see a whole bunch of transactions in there. Now, if I don't have the ability to uh, connect to the bank directly and download the transactions, if I don't have uh, a CSV or Excel version of this, the only option that I have is to enter things manually. Um, so I went, I split the screen. I got the bank statement on the right-hand side, QuickBooks on the left-hand side. So I'm going to go into the chart of accounts. I'm going to click on accounting on the left-hand side click on chart of accounts and then I'm going to collapse the left navigation bar so I get a little bit more of real estate. I'm also going to hit these two X's so I close out those little pop-ups. Again, I'm just trying to enhance the amount of uh, real estate that I got to work with in my screen. I, I can hit control plus or control minus or command plus command minus to zoom in the, the screen. Again, I use Google Chrome. That's my preferred choice with Safari or or Firefox or or Microsoft Edge or whatever, this might be a different experience. So with Google Chrome, just hit Control Plus, Control Minus, and you would zoom in and zoom out. So you would basically pick what works best for you. Then I'm going to go in there and create an account from scratch. So I'm going to click on the new uh, button, and then I'm going to go to bank. Actually, I'm going to do a credit card. So I'm going to switch this from bank to credit card, and then I'm going to call this one. Basically, I'll, I'll capture the last four digits of the credit card somewhere from the bank statement and I'll put it here and I'll put uh, Chase Visa 3375, whatever the last four digits. That's kind of the, the name nomenclature that I like to use. So I'm creating the credit card. I'm not dealing with beginning balances yet. We'll be dealing with that in part three where we talk about reconciliation. So for now, I just created a credit card that has a zero balance. Then I'm going to click on View Register. And... That's going to take me to my credit card register or to my bank register. So from here, I'm literally just going to enter transactions one by one. So we see this first one from Verizon Wireless on 12-28-2020 uh, for 432.58. So basically, to enter the transaction, I'm going to click on Add Credit Card Expense. I'm actually going to click on where it says Add Credit Card Expense. Or if I don't click on that, I click Control Alt N and it opens up that screen. So you can either click on Add the transaction or click on Control Alt N and it will open up the screen. Then I'm gonna hand type the transactions 12, 28, 20. So one really important tip about manual data entry is you don't have to type the whole date. You don't have to click 12 slash 28 slash 2020. You don't have to do that. Literally, you can just Stick with uh, six digit 12, 28, 20, hit tab. QuickBooks recognizes that and enters that date for you. You also have the option of clicking on the calendar and going back and forward and picking a date. I find that it takes forever to do that. I would strongly recommend that you completely skip the process of clicking on the calendar and just do the six digit date. Okay. I'm going to hit tab, tab in order to go to payee, and then I'm going to create my vendor, Verizon Wireless. Now, it's true in my uh, credit card statement, it doesn't say Verizon Wireless. It says VCWRLS. But in the real world, this is what we do. We tend to sort of translate these things to things that people would understand or the end users would understand when they're looking at the report. So obviously, I strongly recommend that you're doing that sort of translation from, you know, weird bank version of the vendor name to the real vendor name. Then I'm going to hit a tab. For the memo, I can skip the memo. I could put something, hit that one more time, and then I'm going to put five, I mean, 432.58. Then I'm going to hit tab to go, and it's going to give me the um, the payment box. I don't need that. Tap one more time, tap one more time until it gets down here to the account box. Then in here, I'm going to type the um, uh, expense category. So let's say I want to have a category called telephone expense. So I start typing telephone expense. Okay, and it doesn't exist here. So I'll just type telephone X pens and then I'll hit tab on the keyboard and it'll automatically pop up the new account screen. Now, one of my little pet peeves about QuickBooks Online is that it defaults to bank. 
I wish uh, QuickBooks would change this and default it to expense because it is the most common type of new uh, account that we're creating on the fly, especially within the context of the the context of the of the um, of that I'm doing, uh, you know, expense uh, transactions. But again, um, you know, that's just you're gonna have to manually change it from bank to expenses. Now, detail type, it doesn't matter what you put here. This is something that QuickBooks Online does for sort of backend statistical purposes. But if you wanna just kind of take it one more step and find what makes the most sense, search for a detail type that works for you. If, again, if you can't find something that works for you, you can leave the default one that shows up or kind of use one of the other overhead type of options here. I'm gonna use the other general administrative as the detail type. But again, it doesn't matter what you put here, it doesn't affect you in any way, shape, or form. So I'm gonna click on save and close. And finally, my expense uh, transaction, it's uh, created. Now the next next thing I'm gonna do, and I zoomed out by hitting control, I'm gonna go into save. Now, there are two ways to do the save. One, you can move your mouse over to the save button and click on that, or you can hit tab and tab, just tap twice and then press enter, and they will activate the save button. That's the first transaction. Let's do the second one, which is Comcast. So how do we do that? We click Control N, Control Alt N to open a new transaction. And then because the date is very similar, this is 1229, I don't have to type 122920. What I can do is just simply hit plus or minus on the keyboard to go up and down one date. So I'm just gonna hit plus once, went to 1229, beautiful. That saved me some time. Tab, tab, and then type Comcast, tab, it's set up as a vendor. I can hit tab, 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 and then enter. And that's how I quickly create a vendor in QuickBooks Online. So tab, tab, and then I put 302.17. Again, we're entering the second transaction that's in here. And then I hit tab, tab, and then I select the category. Let's say this is gonna be just utilities. So I type UTI, there it is. I, I hit uh, tab to select that, tab one more time, enter, and that saves the transaction. So if you're not doing banking and you're entering transactions manually, just these tips will help you speed up your process quite a bit. And in my experience, you're not going to be able to download everything through the bank. You are going to have to enter some transactions manually. So it's really, really important to be able to um, you know, do this in a quick way. Now, the one thing that I don't like about this screen is that the data entry uh, line is always all the way in the top and the transactions come in the bottom. I actually prefer ledger mode. So on the top right, you're gonna see a little gear menu called settings where you can switch this to paper ledger mode. When I click on paper ledger mode, now it's gonna flip the order and put the transactions I've already entered in the top and then the data entry screen in the bottom. That feels to me a lot more like QuickBooks desktop, which is what I'm used to using anyway, but I happen to like that better. Let's do the next one. Next transaction, which is Google storage. So for this, I'm gonna type the date, which is 107. So one more tip about dates. If the year is current year, you don't even have to enter the year. So in this case, we're talking about 107, right? So 107, 21, I put 01, 07, that's it. Hit tab and then QuickBooks is smart enough to know, hey, if you're missing a year, it's probably current year and it enters it for you. So the next vendor is gonna be um, Google. And I'm gonna create that, hit save. And then uh, the charge in this is 1.99. And then I'm gonna put this into dues and subscriptions. Okay, it doesn't exist. So I'm gonna create the account on the fly. Just type it in there, hit tab, change a uh, bank account type to expenses. Again, detail type doesn't matter. But if you can find one that matches what you're trying to do, just go ahead and pick that. For now, I'm just going to pick that generic uh, office administrative, hit save and close, and then hit tab, tab, and then hit save. So that is um, that is the paper ledger mode that includes the transaction uh, in the bottom. Now, other thing I want to show you is um, not just paper ledger mode, one line mode. I like to feel like I'm doing data entry on a spreadsheet. Uh, especially because website-based data entry, it's just a bit clunky, especially when you compare it with QuickBooks Desktop for old school QuickBooks Desktop users. 
So what I like to do is I gotta change it to one line mode. Once I do that, I, the memo uh, disappears temporarily, but I can enable it back in there if I want to. So I, I have complete control of which of these columns I want to see. So banking status, memo, reconcile status. I have complete control of what that looks like. And if I'm not gonna be entering memos, then probably what I wanna do is have a one line mode, which again, will feel like it's a much better uh, data entry process. Let's see the next transaction, combined insurance on 114. Again, we're gonna do 0114, tab, tab, type combined insurance company, tab, 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 enter the account. Let's put that under insurance tab and then the amount 68.11 tab tab enter okay so now you're learning how to do data entry much faster so that's manual data entry in a nutshell is pretty simple process but one thing i'm going to recommend is that